G'day and welcome to the show. We are here for round number four of the High Tech Oils Australian Offshore Superboat Championships and this is mighty Lake Macquarie in the Hunter Valley and we've got some stunning conditions greeting our crews here today for the Offshore Championship. Some new boats going onto the water and we're going to see plenty of action in two races today. A big thank you to Destination New South Wales as well who are a fantastic supporter of this beautiful event along with Les Bink and his team out there at Marmong Point. Supercat Extreme and we're looking at the points table at the moment. Maritimo Australia sitting on top. Back to the triple two. The Mega Fuels Maritimo Racing and Team Australia 2. And the Super Cat outboard category is going to come down to the wire. Mancini Cosmetics Racing on top of the table. 88 Power Zone, the Phantom Saracen and the SUV Simrad all in contention here this weekend. And the Oz 1 Trophy is going to be a tough one here. Maritima Australia just sitting atop of the table, but a very tight tussle with the Triple 2 Mega Fuels, Mancini, Team Australia 2, Team 88 Power Zone, Maritimo and Phantom. The championships hanging in the balance. These teams really need to make sure that everything is right here this weekend at Lake Macquarie for round number four of the High Tech Oils Australian Offshore Superboat Championships. A lot of tension in the pits and a lot of these guys making final adjustments and really making sure everything is perfect on these boats. The fourth round of the Australian Offshore Superboat Championships for 2017 brings the fleet to beautiful Lake Macquarie in the New South Wales Hunter Valley. Marmong Point Marina plays host as a venue for this crucial round of the championship and the good folk of Marmong Point have made the team very welcome. We put this together last year for the first year. It was a fantastic success. This year we've done it again. Hear that in the background, that's what it's all about. Um, we had a lot of rain yesterday, unfortunately, that kept the crowds down, but we still had thousands turn out here, so hopefully today, less rain, more crowd. Made us a 245 berth marina in Lake Macquarie, probably one of the biggest privately owned marinas in New South Wales, not many people know that. Um, we renewed it eight years ago, uh, with all the grounds here, there's 8,000 metres of, of, of grounds that we maintain for the public, and then we've got a, a, a large workyard behind us. Lake Macquarie is also the home ground for Triple Two Offshore, and they're ready for a strong showing. Yeah, look, um, Newcastle's 25 minute drive. We've got the supercars on there in November. We've got the lake, largest saltwater lake in the uh, Southern Hemisphere. It's just a great place to live. You go out down the channel into Newcastle, a couple of hours down the coast and down to Sydney. It's great, best kept secret. But they have to hunt down the ever strong Maritimo outfit who continue to race forward to Australia One Glory. Yeah, yeah, I suppose, but, you know, we're, everyone's in the same book. Like, we could, you know, have uh, malfunction and, you know, so it's just one of those things that you just got to, uh, fingers crossed, when the flag drops and go for it. Yeah, we've got the new little R36 down here to uh, make its debut, I suppose, um, get it ready for Tom for next season in uh, the US. We had a few teething problems yesterday with some belts and uh, a bit of balance, so... Um, to change the balance and change the belts and put some spaces in the drive to get a bit more uh, bite out of the props, so we'll see how today goes. Spare a thought for the Mega Fuels as they've suffered more damage across the season than any of their rivals, but their crew will never ever give up. Yeah, it's been a big season for hull damage for us. Um, seems, you know, every every second race nearly we've um, we've got the boat on the crane and got it out of the water and had some damage. So Coffs Harbour was a bad one for us. But um, yeah, big team effort, got it going this week. I think the engines went back in and then, you know, to pull it out of the water yesterday and see more hull damage was a bit disheartening, you know. We sort of put the effort in and we still keep getting kicked in the gut. So it's, um, it's one of them things. Making a welcome return to the championship this weekend is Team 3. Welcoming new pilots on board, Travis Thompson and John Shand. Yeah, the boat used to run the 555 setup, um, and it was a very successful boat. And to be honest, once those 750s went in, holy, <laughs> hold on, she just woke that thing up, and uh, it's just a rocket ship. It's going really, really well. So, a bit of fine tuning here and there, and we'll, but we'll uh, should be uh, hopefully at the pointy end of the field again today. Then there's the battle for the top honours in the Supercat Airport, which has been just as competitive as the Extreme Class. Uh, reliability's been really good, so uh, myself and the old man have been working incredibly hard to keep the reliability there. Hasn't let us down so far, touch wood, but um, it's been really good. So it's a lot of hard work, but it's been paying off. Yeah, it's, we're going to struggle a bit today, I think. Uh, Phantom had a few problems, I think they sorted that out. 
Um, ADH just ready to go. We had a few steering issues yesterday, so hopefully we can corner a bit better today, but we're going to be pushing it today for sure. Let's not forget the crew of the Phantom who are raring to go again after their misfortunes in Coffs Harbour. Yeah, that we did, mate. Um, oh, we just, we were going pretty good. Uh, we kept up to the 32 foot boats. We thought we were anyway, and then uh, we decided to try and go inside him and caught his wave and we just gently rolled over and that was it, it was all over. So we had more time than we thought. Like in the cell test, we sort of dumped straight in the water. In the cabin, we had plenty of time to get out, like, or not to get out, but we had plenty of time to sort ourselves out because we strapped in. Once we got the belts off and had the oxygen, we just sort of had to wait for a bit of water and we just popped the lid out and we went. So the Phantom being lowered into the water after its little swim and looking and going beautifully. And instead of, well, a little bit of a change of format here at Lake Macquarie, normally a pole position shootout happens on the Saturday prior to racing. But at Lake Macquarie, it was incorporated into another race. So we've actually raced on Saturday for points towards the championship. Mix things up a little bit, also open the championship out just a little bit as well. So teams had some great racing yesterday. Let's have a little bit of a look at how race number one panned out. Got a great start and it was quite sloppy conditions for Lake Macquarie. Very a, a large amount of wind chop there, but as you can see, boats getting across it nicely. Phantom came across in third place in the Supercat outboard category after the boat being put back together after that little rollover. So Ian Harris and Mickey Walker they're doing a great job to get the boats back out on the water. Saracen, all the way up from Victoria. They did a great job. Matt Kelly and Anthony Dufina into second place in that beautiful Saracen catamaran. And the winners of race number one were Michael and Griff Ethel in the Team 88 Power Zone entry. The little rocket ship with the 2.5 litre Mercury engines on the transom of that boat. Those boys were super, super excited. Mega Fuels, Brendan and Chris Fryer, they picked up third place in race number one. Didn't quite show the pace that they perhaps would have wanted. The local hero, uh, Darren Nicholson, Peter McGrath in the triple two. They picked up second place, did a great job. Darren wants to do well here. He is the mayor of Newcastle and he lives on Lake Macquarie. But the winners of race number one were the might of Maritimo Australia. Maritimo 12, Tom Barricotta and Steve Jelly Did a fantastic job. This boat didn't start the series out terribly well, but they have just come along in leaps and bounds, as we expect from Team Maritimo. So, moving on now into round number four of the High Tech Oils Australian Offshore Superboat Championships, and this is race number two. This boat, super exciting. Team three, Travis Thompson and Johnny Shand. We've got Johnny Shand, we've imported him all the way over from New Zealand. This boat's had the 750 horsepower engines fitted to it and it is going to be a rocket ship. I can really feel it. It's a small boat, big power, flag drops, and we are racing in race number two, round number four of the High Tech Oils Australian Offshore Superboat Championships. We go on board now with Tom Barry Cotter and Steve Jellick. Maritimo 12, they have not been able to do any wrong in this boat. We need to talk about Maritimo 11 as well. Brand new boat, the number six drive boat with the two Willerton boys, Andrew and Ross Willerton. And this is the first race for that boat. But as we head up into the port turn at the top end of the course, this is turn number one and it is tight as Pussy's bow here at the moment because we've got the triple two on the outside. Have a look at team three. They are right in the wash of Maritimo 12. Maritimo 12 have got a cracking start and are really accelerating away. There's a graphic example of the gap and you can absolutely throw a blanket over this field. There is thousands of people on the bank here at Lake Macquarie and they are being absolutely thrilled. The power, the noise and the speed here. We go on board now with Thompson and Shand on the Team 3. This is a tough challenge for these guys. This boat has had the 525 Mercruise and race engines removed and it's had the big 750 horsepower carburetted big blocks fitted to it. It's got more horsepower than this boat's ever seen in its life. It's always been a beautifully balanced boat. It's always been super quick and I think these guys are really going to enjoy having a lot of power really stuck in the transom of this boat at the moment. As you can see, they are running hard. They are all over the transom of the Maritimo 12 at the moment. In fact, you can see Johnny Shan, they're just trying to avoid the, uh, the spray and the wash of rooster tail 
off Maritimo 12. And Maritimo 12, they know their mirrors are absolutely full of the rest of the snapping pack at the moment. And they need to push hard. They just can't afford to let up one little bit here. Tom Barry Cotter, Steve Jellick, absolute professionalism. These guys have raced internationally. Tom Barry Cotter in particular, very, very successful in the X-Cat series and has also raced in the United States. And Tom is absolutely all over. You can see him. Just the finesse that he's got on the wheel there. Just little movements, just flicking from side to side, just making sure the boat doesn't hook up. This uh, Lake Macquarie chop just really presenting no challenge at all for the Maritimo 12. In fact, for the entire fleet of Supercat Extreme Boats, it's a hard chop. It's a, uh, it's just a pounding. It's it's not an ocean swell. They just, you can see their eyes will be bouncing in their heads at the moment, doing about 130 miles per hour at the moment. So well up near the 200 kilometre an hour mark as the Team 3 pushes on hard in hot pursuit of the Maritimo 12. These guys out in front of the Super Cat outboard category. It is Michael and Griffith Al. They are doing beautifully in the championship, leading this race at the moment. And if they can get the job done here, they're going to be very, very very well in a terrific position within the championship if they can get some wins done here. These conditions will suit those guys. A smaller boat's got good horsepower. It's very nimble running the lighter 2.5 litre Mercury engines. Now we go into the port turn. Still back on board now with Tom Barry Cotter and Steve Jellick. They are just working this field beautifully at the moment. We track now Team 3. It's an interesting one for Team 3 here. Travi Thompson and John Shan. A new pairing in this boat. The boat hasn't been running in this configuration before. So this is a real learning curve for these guys. Although they've both been in this boat before, they haven't been in it with this particular setup. And you can see Johnny Shan just working the wheel very, very hard there. In fact, looks a lot like Tom Barry Cotter, doesn't he? He's just a little twitchy movements and just trying to not to let those inside sponsons bite and grab and spin the boat out. Just being very delicate on the wheel, but having to work it hard. The young guns, the hard pushing Fryer brothers now in the mega fuels. And isn't it great to see mega fuels on board? We thank them for their fabulous support. They've been really behind these guys and they've needed to be this year. The guys have really struggled with damage in this boat. They've damaged the hull multiple times. They damaged the hull yesterday in race number one and the team did a fantastic job to get that boat back out on the water very determined team to keep up and about and the Fryer boys are doing a beautiful job up against some uh, pretty adverse conditions at the moment Maritimo Australia Tom Barry Cotter Steve Jellick we go back on board with these guys now just watch Tom just working the wheel there you can uh, see him he's just feeling the hull basically through his backside it's a real feel game these guys play and uh, he's doing a beautiful job Triple two, they want to be out in front. They're not too impressed with uh, the positioning that they're in at the moment. You can see Nicholson and McGrath, they're just concentrating on the job at hand. They're certainly not looking like they're absolutely ecstatic with how things are going at the moment. In fact, Darren looking down and they're discussing a few things here. I'm tipping that they're probably not 100% happy with the boat and the setup at the moment, but uh, just to, ooh, I'd love to know what the conversation is there at the moment. Maybe they don't want us to know what the uh, conversation going on there. But Nicholson keeps looking down. Not really sure what he's uh, looking at or what would be down there. Maybe uh, maybe some gauges or, or something along those lines. But certainly something going on in the cockpit of that boat. So let's hope they can get that squared away. Maritimo 12 still in this absolutely red hot battle with the team three as team three comes down now the other exciting part about this beautiful lake macquarie course in the hunter valley is this beautiful right hand dog leg down the back straight these guys aren't normally used they do turn right in a couple of races that they do but it is a little bit unusual and the boats are generally set up to turn left so the right hand turns do really present a challenge for the pilots and you can see running in the wash of the Maritimo. Let's see if they can get the boat turned in as well. He's right on the lip of Maritimo and see, he runs a bit wide there, drops outside the wash and I'm tipping that he didn't want to run wide there. He was really gathering that boat back in to try and get it back into the wash of the Maritimo 12. What you need to do when you're running behind another boat, if you uh, the distance that they are behind them, which is still well and truly within striking distance, you want to run in their wash, try and run the same lines they are, let them smash the waves down for you a little bit and then hope that you can 
get an opportunity to get up the inside, get around the outside and make a move on them. So these guys need to be really careful now. Tom Barry Cotter and Stevie Jelly in the Maritimo Australia. Still leading this one, but they know they've got this challenge from a hard charging Team 3 just really on their heels at the moment. You can see the gap there. It has opened out just a little bit now. Race leader in the 600 horsepower category, and it is Michael Griffith Al in the beautiful 88 power zone entry. And these guys, well, I tell you what, they'll be pretty excited. The little boat doesn't like the rough water, but it's certainly enjoying these conditions here today. And they are absolutely making hay while the sun shines out here on Mighty Lake Macquarie. This boat here is doing a terrific job. Now, let's bear in mind, this boat went upside down at round number three, and they've had to dry the whole boat out, give it a complete rebuild, and Mickey Walker and Ian Harris are doing a fabulous job. It's probably the fastest boat in this Supercat outboard fleet. It's the same hull as the 88 Power Zone. It's running more horsepower. It's running a pair of 300 horsepower, 3.2 litre stroker. Uh, Optimax engines on the back of this boat, so they've got a lot more torque than the little power zone boat. The power zone boat, though, the power to weight ratio is really high. It's fantastic. The boat's super light, the engines are super light, and it's still making around 280 horsepower per engine. So these guys, although they've done a great job to get the boat back out of the water, I know they're competitors and they won't want to be sitting behind that power zone boat for too long. They'll want to get going. Maritime Australia now, this is boat 12 comes through, and we've had word, if you've uh, probably noticed, that we haven't seen the Maritimo 11 boat on the course. Unfortunately, we've just had word it's gone back into the pits and it's thrown a couple of power steering belts off the engines. So they've obviously got some form of alignment issue. Shagged flag comes out and Maritimo Australia comes through and takes the win. Fantastic ever. Team three come through into second place. So solid run from them here in race number two here at Mighty Lake Macquarie. And team three will be pretty happy with that. I think, uh, look, plenty of instructions coming there from Travi Thompson over to uh, Johnny Chan there as well. Mega Fuels, they're going to come through for the infant's friend and pick up third place, Brendan and Chris Fry. They'll be pretty happy with that. Hopefully that boat's hung in there. They did have damage on it after race number one yesterday. Let's hope that it hangs together and it's hung together in this one. Phantom comes through and look at this. The Phantom have come through and overhauled the 88 in the dying stages of this race and they are absolutely ecstatic. So to go from a rollover and look at Ian Harris, he's got a smile on his dial. So let's have a look at the winners and losers. Maritimo Australia taking the win there back to Team 3 Mega Fuels and unfortunately Triple Two and Maritimo both having DNFs in this particular race. In the Supercat outboard category and what an amazing effort to get this boat back out on the water. The Phantom come through with the win back to the 88 power zone and the Saracen picking up third place. Yeah, yeah, it uh, was all about getting that good start. You know, this is a pretty technical course and lots of turns. There's uh, two right-handers and, you know, three, three left-hand or four left-handers. So um, if you can get out in front, you know, it's not like someone can just build up the momentum around the outside. You know, they're always going to meet that other, other corner and get caught on the inside again. So, um, you know, that's going to be the key to the next race as well. Just get that good start and get out in the clean water. Yeah, it's um, bloody loving the horsepower that was 750 instead of the 525. Um, and we've sort of, I think we've hit the nail on the head with the gearing, but for the first race, so we'll just pull her out of the water and chuck a, another set of gears in and get a bit more top speed. Yeah, I, we just need one or two more mile an hour, and um, I just tidy up my corners a bit better, and I think we we'll, uh, might be able to beat the big Maritimo. Yeah, mate, we we, um, we got a good start today, but you know we were pile five picked out of the um, ballot, so it was going to be a bit difficult. But I mean, we were there along the straight and that, but the boys turned on the inside and had the run on us, and. It was a bit of a fight for that first lap with um, Team 3 and Triple 2 and no, Team O, there was a lot of white water, couldn't see for a little while, but um, yeah, we ended up with a third overall and that, which you know we're happy about, the reliability of the boats, what gets us across the line, you know, and um, and I don't think we're too far off the pace. Yeah, something like that, yeah, it was, we were very tentative yesterday, to be honest, um, both of us were, and we were having a little drama as well, but um, today we felt really good, so it's all good. Looks like it might be going to get just a little tiny bit windier, so um, we might just have that little bit of ballast maybe during the race, but that's it. Uh, we had a little bit of a niggly issue while we were out there. Um, we found ourselves a little bit lacking in speeds. Uh, had a, probably had a bit of a box playing up, so uh, it's best to change it out and so we can finish the second race. Uh, yeah, it was a good run. The smaller boats are probably a bit faster than us in the calm water today. Um, so we're doing a prop change. 
refueling and uh, have another go next, next race. Tough racing out there today. We'll stick around, folks, because we are going to be back with race number three here at beautiful Lake Macquarie for the High Tech Oils Australian Offshore Superboat Championship, round number four. Welcome back to the final race here at Lake Macquarie, thanks to Destination New South Wales of the High Tech Oils, Australian Offshore Superboat Championships, and running out of the magnificent Marmong Point Marina. And Big Leslie Binken, he is enjoying every minute of this as the boats line up for the final race of the day. And we have got some competitors that really want to get up and going. The flag drops, and the you know what stops. And have a look how close we run to the crowd as we go on board the Triple Two. And and the power is unleashed in this final race here at Lake Macquarie and have a look at the acceleration from Maritimo 12 that is on the outside but the boat that's really streaked the start is the Team 3 and the facial expressions have not improved on board the Triple 2 Peter McGrath and Darren Nicholson the local hero Darren Nicholson of course he's the uh, unofficial mayor of Newcastle and he lives right here on Lake Macquarie and he doesn't look too excited at the moment because I'm tipping he doesn't like looking at those rooster tails out in front of him but they've snuck up the inside can they make some ground can they bump a couple of these guys wide like these blokes Brendan and Chris Fry you can see on the limiters as the boat charges along you can see the lights the limiter lights flashing at the driver there as they just uh, just hold those throttles as hard as they can down plenty of trim into the boats and this is desperate racing because not only is this the final race for this round this is the penultimate round oh look at this Maritimo leave nothing to be desired there as they come across triple two have to go through their wash dangerous stuff oh look at the hook that's happened there as well that was amazing stuff very very tight racing indeed and don't forget ladies and gentlemen these boats are around about three and a half four ton and well 40 odd foot long and a little hook like that just is absolutely amazing great job by all the teams not to uh trade any paint so out in front Mega Fuels at the moment. Brendan and Chris Fry, they've done a great job. They've actually overhauled the Team 3, who are the early leaders in this race. Triple 2 have dropped out the back door just a little bit, and Maritimo 12 running into second spot, which is a spot they haven't been in too often in this championship since the early rounds. Now we're up and about on board with Team 3. Trevi Thompson and Johnny Shand, and they are certainly, you can see the pounding that they're getting as the camera gets moved around. Water coming in through the top of the cockpit as well. They've been driving. Oh, Shandy has to grab a big handful of opposite lock there as well as he drifts across the wash of the boats in front of him. There's a graphic view. So... Mega Fuels, Brendan and Chris Fryer for Infant's Friend out there doing it beautifully in front. Back to Maritimo Australia. And this is an absolute ding dong. The Fry boys will be very, very excited to be out in front, but they know they've got a very, very strong challenge coming from the Maritimo Australia team. You just can't relax any time those guys are in your mirrors because they will absolutely push and push and push, and they will not stop pushing until they can get the nose of that number 12 boat into the lead. So Fryer boys with it all before them at the moment. The 600 horsepower Supercat outboard category, Mickey and Griffith Al, they go to the lead in the 88 power zone machine those little 2.5 litre mergers gee I love them they sound absolutely fantastic as they scream up to around about 8200 rpm down the front straight I tell you what folks if you can get yourself down to this particular Lake Macquarie course and watch the racing from here this is the venue where the boats come the absolute closest to the crowd that you'll ever see the ground is shaking here in the commentary box as these boats go past it is absolutely exciting there's not another motorsport like it with big engines and big horsepower twin engines in these boats Brendan and Chris Fry I'm not sure if there's a problem going on here or what's happening they look to have slowed a little bit we'll just keep an eye on them as they tip down into the port turn I'm wondering whether there may be a little bit of an issue they, they're squaring that boat up they've had some steering problems in this boat uh, earlier in the season where they had a little bit of a collision but uh, they get the boat squared away turn it around and they continue on their way at the moment let's hope that they can uh, maintain their lead here at the moment as mega fuel still running out in front looks looks good coming through here might have just been the angle or it's quite a tight corner down through the bottom so they do have to actually wash off a lot of speed interesting lines as well as you watch maritimo 12 and then team three come through this is just a slight dog leg up the front straightaway 
and everybody attacking it from a different angle. It's all about momentum in boats. You don't have brakes, so you don't want to wash off too much speed. You want to maintain momentum. The way that you do that is keep the rudder as straight as possible. Every time you lay on the steering wheel, it turns the rudder. Not only does it turn the boat, but it acts like a big water break. And so every time that rudder's not straight, you're washing off speed. So all of these pilots are trying to keep the rudders and run as straight a line from point to point as they possibly can. Challenges on now, Maritimo 12. Tom Barry Cotter, Steve Jellick, they are absolutely just looking at the rooster tail now of Brendan and Chris Fryer. The Fryer boys will make that the widest boat on the course here at the moment. I can guarantee you of that. They will not be getting around these guys without an absolute fight. So, Fryer boys, in fact, that's interesting, isn't it? Look at that. Tom Barry Cotter just steers the boat from the port side of the wash of the mega fuels across over to the starboard side of the wash and they still pushing hard so these guys are really being challenged here by the mega fuels boat Brendan and Chris Fry for infant's friend and they are doing an awesome job in holding out this Maritimo 12 Maritimo Australia boat at the moment on board now Mick Walker and Ian Harris they are in hot pursuit of the 88 power zone and they want to try and get it done they took a win in race number two but at the moment they're running in second spot here in race number three this boat freshly rebuilt and you can see it is an absolutely magnificently prepared boat and I tell you what little rumor file here you can put this one in the bank rumor is new boat coming for that team next season keep your eye watch this space folks First with the latest, Bishow, don't worry about that. Mega Fuels now down the back straight away. And Brendan and Chris, they are still facing this absolutely hard for challenge from these guys, Tom Barry Cotter and Stevie Jellick. Maritimo Australia, boat 12 as they come through. On the subject of Maritimo, we've heard that unfortunately the brand new Maritimo 11 boat with Andrew and Ross Willerton has thrown its belts off again at the start of this race. So they've got a serious misalignment problem with that boat. It's throwing belts off left, right and centre. They'll get that boat sorted out. I tell you what, I had a look at it in the pits earlier on. It is absolutely magnificent. <laughs> look out once they get that boat going because you know the team Maritimo will get it right. And when they do, it'll be frighteningly fast. On board now with Travi Thompson and Johnny Shan. We're got a, a Kiwi and a Quasi on board this boat, Travi Thompson. They reckon he's lived in Australia long enough to now be called an Aussie. I'm not so sure myself. He still talks funny, but he's doing a great job as he tips the boat into the port turn down at the bottom end of this course, and they go hard. Oh, look at this now. Maritimo arrives on the scene. It's happening all over Lake Macquarie here at the moment because Team 3, they're watching the goings on in front of them. Then we've got the Mega Fuels trying to hold off the uh, Maritimo 12. Maritimo 12 are just having a little bit of a sneak up the inside. And I tell you what, the Fryer boys will want to shut the door there because of fair dinkum. They'll be like a dog with a bone, the Maritimo boys. They will be, uh, well, like a rat up a drain pipe if the door gets left open. They'll be in there quicker than you can uh, even imagine. So... Nicholson and McGrath, they are still a little bit off the pace in this boat and they are not too impressed. You can see the look on the faces. That is not a happy camp at the minute. Darren wanted to do well here. He is a, a local. He's just racing in his own backyard, really enjoying himself. Had a great weekend. Boat's running strong. I've spoken to the boys. They've sorted out the handling issues in that boat. It's handling very, very nicely indeed now. But the problem they've got is just a lack of top end. And they're really not sure what they're going to do to fix it at the moment. Look at this battle going on now. The little phantom machine now pushing for all they're worth as they just skip across. They're trying to catch the 88 power zone. And look at the stuff flying around in the cockpit as they're taking some big hits. I tell you what, there's no holds barred. And, uh, well, Mickey Walker, he says to Ian, are we going to catch these guys or what? Ian's, I'm not too sure, brother. Just keep pushing. So that's what they're doing. Mickey and Griffith Al in at the 88 power zone. They have got smiles all round at the moment. Mega Fuels now still trying to hold off this unbelievable challenge coming from Maritimo 12. I tell you what, when you're being challenged, when you're in front of a race, the last thing you want to see is the two pickle forks of that Maritimo 12 boat because you know it's probably the best and fastest boat in Australia and the Fryer boys are doing an amazing job to hold off this boat at the moment their boat much much older it's a Maritimo hull as well but it's been around for well over 15 to 17 years now and they have been having issues with uh, hull 
delamination and failures. So this is an amazing effort for the older boat with the two young guns to hold out the big guns of Maritimo. But look at that. They've run wide. The Friar boys, they just ride out an open invitation to the Maritimo and say, here's the door, son. There you go, take the lead. So they'll be absolutely kicking themselves for running a bit wide there. In fact, they run through the wash of the Maritimo now. And I know that those boys will not be too happy with that at all. What can they do here from now? Oh, look at that. Unbelievable stuff. You've got to be so careful driving through the rooster tail of these boats. It can flip you over that quickly. You wouldn't even know about it. They got away with it this time, but you don't want to be doing that too often. Let's have a look at the replay now as we see the dog leg. So the mega fuels come through and uh, this was a little bit earlier on. Now down into this bottom turn. This is where they ran a little bit wide. You can see they get the boat, try and get the boat turned in, but they don't get it hooked up and the boat drifts and slides wide. And there you go. That is the door opened for Maritimo. So Tom, Barry Connor and Steve Jellick, they say, thank you very much. We'll have that. And then in their desperation, up through the right hand dog leg. Have a look at this. Absolutely gay abandon as they throw the boat through the rooster tail. And you can just see no visibility whatsoever as they go through there. That's brave stuff from the Friar boys. They are really having a red hot go here on Lake Macquarie at the moment. Wind conditions starting to blow up as well. You can see the white cap starting to come through the course. And uh, these boys are really starting. They will uh, jump over these washes pretty well. Like it doesn't get a big ocean swell. So you don't see the big jump going on. You can see the Fry Boys again running a little bit wide. I'm just wondering whether they're just having a little bit of trouble getting that boat turned in because this is where they're losing ground at the moment. It's really not a top end speed issue. They've got the pace to run with the Maritimo 12 but you can't afford to run wide and run a wider course. They do maintain momentum but this bottom corner in particular where we're running through at the moment is quite a tight corner and if you lose momentum through there or if you drift too wide and let old mate up the inside he's going to take everything he can get particularly when you're talking about a Tom Barry Cotter. He'll slide in where there's a cigarette paper with. Don't worry about that. He is a racer. Team 3 still in hot pursuit. They're just sitting back here at the moment and uh, just watching the goings on here team three are just looking for a spot to pounce i would suggest this is a beautifully balanced beautifully prepared shaft driven boat it's uh, a victory an ex victory team boat and uh, travis thompson and johnny shand are both hard racers johnny shand runs his own boat back at home in new zealand and is a very very experienced campaigner and you can see him just working hard on the wheel he might just can they get this boat turned in they do that's how nicely this boat handles they just run on the inside lip of the wash there of the mega fuels and they're having a little bit of a look at brendan and chris fryer here now as well so brendan and chris can they hold off the team three that is going to be the question because the team three is charging hard and the fryer boys want to try and maintain some track position here Oh, and devastation. What's happened? We're just talking about him making a play for second place. We see triple two go through. Team three comes off the plane. Travi Thompson, he pops the lid open. And, uh, well, Johnny Shear, they'll be devastated with that. Uh, Travis, a very, very good race boat engineer in his own right. He actually has two caps on this weekend. He works for Maritimo as well. And you can see Shandy, he is a racer. He rips the uh, plug out of the helmet throws it in the boat not happy at all he doesn't like watching those boats disappear into the distance so it's always handy to carry your own mechanic and that's what these boys are doing at the moment Travi Thompson opens up the hatch and has a little bit of a look he closed it pretty quickly as well so not really sure what the issue is there hopefully they can get back up and going again Brendan and Chris Fryer charge on and in second place Maritimo leading we'll be back with more racing real soon We mainly transport the boats to all the races. Um, our involvement is more like a pit crew operation. Uh, help out with the guys if, we, if they need a hand. We always do because we you know, feel as though we're part of the team. And it's a team sport. And without us and the little guys, just like every other motorsport, it just wouldn't exist. So you know, we feel as though we're, our role, role is as important as the next place. You know, I've got myself to a stage where I can take a truck out to help the Maritimo guys 
I love the sport, like the blokes in it. So I make the effort and take the time to help them out and um, it gets me away from work and a little bit of R&R &R from the phone ringing all the time. I don't answer the phone while I'm here. So no, I really enjoy it. Welcome back to round number four of the High Tech Oils Australian Offshore Superboat Championships. And we have got a terrific battle going on here at beautiful Lake Macquarie in the Hunter Valley here at Marmong Point. And we go on board with the Mega Fuels. They've just been overhauled by the Maritimo. They have uh, composed themselves, gathered themselves back together. Here is the boat that has just inherited third spot. Team three, unfortunately, dropping out. We haven't had word back from the pitch yet as to what the issue is with that boat. But Nicholson and McGrath, they continue on this beautifully prepared boat. Darren Nicholson, the owner of the boat there. You can see he's the pilot with the wheel. Peter Muddy McGrath is the engineer that does all the work on this boat and prepares just one of the best race boats in Australia. Just looking for a little bit more pace out of that boat at the moment. Out in front. Michael and Griff Athal. They are a father and son combination. Griff doing a beautiful job. He prepares this boat along with help from his son, Michael. It is no, They are known as the master and the apprentice. Griff the master and, of course, Michael the apprentice. But they are being hunted by these blokes. Mickey Walker and Ian Harris. They are hard chargers. And I tell you what, big Mickey Walker, he just loves to go fast. He ski races, he boat races. Broke his hip on a jet ski. He's out of control, this bloke. And he will not lift. He will not give an inch. And as I said a little bit earlier on in the show, big news for these guys. We hear that a new boat, a bigger boat, coming for next season's uh, championship. So that's going to be one to watch. Having a look at these guys, it's been a little bit smooth for the big Saracen catamaran, Anthony Defina and Matt Kelly. But I tell you what, they've done a beautiful job. And... These guys have got this boat trimmed that high. They've got the boats and the engines trimmed right out and the boat just sitting up on its tail like a little runabout. They're just trying to get maximum speed out of this boat at the moment, the 22 Saracen. They hail out of Melbourne in Victoria. And uh, as you can see now, just getting rounded up by Maritimo. Maritimo running them in nice and tight. They want to run the tightest course that they can. So too to Saracen. And uh, these guys are really wringing the neck of this boat. They've done a great job. Um, they're running plenty of pace and there you go as you can see the boat sitting right up on its tail and just dancing from Sponson to Sponson to Fina and Kelly just wringing the neck of that Saracen boat unfortunately the conditions just a little bit too smooth for those guys today they just can't quite get the gap on those little boats but doing a beautiful job Brendan and Chris Fryer these guys still giving it their all fantastic effort by the team they had damage after race day number one they did fiberglass repairs on the boat this boat's had a lot of damage this year and unfortunately for the boys they've had to work really really hard but it just shows the quality of their crew triple two Nicholson and McGrath the local hero sponsored by uh, Land Rover and Jaguar as they come through and you can see again if you look across to your right hand side the magnificent huge crowds that we get here at Lake Macquarie as I said folks do yourself a favor if you're a local check your local guides check the Facebook check the um, OSC web page and you can get the dates for these races because fair dinkum you need to be here and experience this it's amazing when the boats come past as close as they do the ground is just shaking as I said in the commentary box it is absolutely unbelievable fantastic racing Michael and Griffith Al now still facing this really hard challenge coming from the purple phantom rocket ship but doing a great job they're holding them off and the throttles are hard down Mick Walker and Ian Harris are doing absolutely everything have a look at that shot there as Maritimo just in that starboard turn sliding and drifting Tom Barry Cotter just working the wheel beautifully there and uh, gee, I hope they can see more than I can see out of that cockpit at the moment obviously sun glare and spray are a little bit of an issue here as well you see the mega fuel same deal for these guys as they slide the boat these boats really do get a big slide particularly up through these fast dog leg corners Mega fuels, Brendan and Chris. So you can see them now. They'll start setting the boat up to come in to this port turn. This is where it's a real team effort. So these guys are talking to each other the whole time. You got one guy on the throttles, and you got one guy doing the steering duties in the boat. So these guys need to be talking to each other as they come into the corners. It's come off. It's turn it in. Um, they need to be just communicating the whole time, and that's what these guys are doing. It is a real team sport, offshore powerboat racing, and they're doing a beautiful job, as two of these guys, Tom Barry Cotter and Steve Jellick. And I tell you what, look at Jellick. He looks like the Iceman, doesn't he? He's just getting it done 
Got the hammers down in that big Maritimo machine. Great to see Bill Barry Cotter here this weekend. Of course, the team owner of Maritimo. It was good to catch up with Bill in the pits as well. And uh, he's uh, just really enjoying his powerboat racing, particularly with his son, Tom Barry Cotter, doing so beautifully out there at the moment. Brendan and Chris, the two brothers here as well. And they are still trying hard so you can see they've dropped into the wash but see how they run wide there again so i think they're probably not able to get this boat turned in as well as the maritimo trial boat and i think that's probably a little bit of an issue for them particularly on a course like this so that'll be something that this team will probably be working on uh for the next round and uh you know i mean it only becomes an issue in these tight corners on these particular courses but you know, they need to be good everywhere if you're going to win this championship because this championship is really hard, really tight and really fast and you need to be absolutely on your game to try and get the job done here. We go on board now with Team 88 Power Zone, Michael and Griffith Hell. It's a 25-foot shifty catamaran and it's running 2.5-litre EFI Merc race engines. All of these boats run what we call a reinforced cockpit. Very, very safe. In fact, uh, we've had a few rollovers the last few seasons and a few comings together and we've never had a driver injury and it is an absolute credit to the boat builders they are built to withstand 3,000 newton metres of force, the cockpits in these boats. They have five and six point harnesses. They run air supply in the boats and uh, they really, really are very safe deals. You can see the big strut that goes up between Brendan and Chris Fry. They're up into uh, an incorporated roll cage in the cockpit of this boat as well. So super strong, these boats. And uh, it's just made the sport of offshore powerboat racing that was once extremely dangerous, uh, quite a safe sport now and uh, just a great spectacle. And I'll tell you what, if you wanted to get involved in this, just uh, get on board, get on board the Facebook page, make some inquiries through the web page. And, uh, well, if you want to get involved, there are some boats around for lease as well. So um, it is uh, quite an easy sport to get involved in and you have a great time, great bunch of people as well. Michael and Griff, Athal, Team 88 Power Zone, as we go on board with them again. This little boat, have a look at it, just dancing from sponsor to sponsor and... Uh, uh, well, a massive amount of wheel work having to go into that boat just to keep it on the straight and narrow. And this is what we spoke about earlier on. You want to be putting, and this is the man that taught me this, Peter Muddy McGrath, as little rudder on the boat as possible because every time you lean on that rudder, every time you lean on that steering wheel, it's like putting the water brakes on and it slows you down. You want to go as straight as you can for as long as you can. And don't worry, he has been giving Darren Nicholson there plenty of lessons and schooling in the art of offshore powerboat racing. You just see the vibration, particularly through Nicholson's helmet. If you look at his microphone just in front of his mouth there, you see it shuddering away. And that's the, uh, the just the light chop that they're skipping across. Bear in mind, these boats are doing nearly 200 kilometers an hour, sometimes over 200 kilometers an hour. And it's like driving down a corrugated road at 200 k's an hour. They're not taking big hits in this water, but they're just absolutely shuddering. And I'll tell you what, what happens is, it's very hard to focus on your eyes when it gets like that because your eyes start to actually your eyeballs bounce in your head and uh, it's really tricky to focus in particular sometimes to pick up the turn boys as you're coming into them so these guys working pretty hard in the cockpits also they don't have air conditioning in these boats they do have uh, an airflow system but um, pretty primitive and uh, once you're locked in there you've got no windows that you can open up so they would be sweating they're working hard fryer boys still have a look at the pace on that boat certainly just not letting up one little bit are they in fact they've made some ground on the triple two triple two was sort of having a little bit of a look at the back of them particularly once team three dropped out we haven't seen team three rejoin this race which is a uh, really really disappointing for the team three guys because those engines were supplied to them by Team Maritimo, and uh, I'm sure that uh, the boys would like to thank the Team Maritimo for the uh, the donation of their engines because uh, their engines uh, had no longer had a category to run in. So um, Team Maritimo came to the party there and helped Team 3 out. So I know the uh, boys at Team 3 were very, very appreciative to uh, Bill and his team out there at Maritimo Racing for the supply of those couple of engines. And I tell you what, it was a pretty scary thing for Bill to do because I reckon that Team 3, once it's sorted out, it may be very, very hard to beat. It is a super quick, beautifully balanced boat. Speaking of super quick and beautifully balanced, Michael and Griffith Hell, they have absolutely, this has been their weekend. I think this has probably been their best weekend of racing throughout the whole series. And uh, we'll catch up with these guys after this one. But Team 88 Power Zone, absolutely on fire at the moment. Big Griffey FL 
hammers down. Michael doing a beautiful job. He's hitting all of the turns, hitting all the pins, and they are being hunted by boat number five, the Phantom. You can see those bigger Mercury 3.2 litre, 300 XS engines hanging off the transom. They're bigger, they're heavier, they make more torque, um, they don't rev as hard. So it's a really interesting combination. They run bigger propellers, um, they've got better acceleration out of the corners. Their top speed is amazing in this boat. Um, the advantage of the 88 Power Zone boat would be that it is lighter. It's a lighter boat, lighter engines, probably a little bit better balance, particularly in the rougher water. So the problem that those boys have is uh, they're not as strong as some of the bigger boats like a Mancini, a Hog's Breath, or a Saracen in those rougher conditions. So we see Maritimo 12 now just beautifully coming through the dog leg and the crowd being absolutely thrilled with this at the moment as they come through and that boat just looking perfect as it always does. Maritimo turning out a beautiful boat. I know they're not too happy. The 11 boat, they really wanted to shake that boat down here this weekend and they really haven't got that boat onto the water. They ran a couple of uh, test laps on Friday, uh, they didn't start race one, uh, started race number two, and race number three was a no-show for them as well. So Andrew Ross Wilton had an absolutely dogged weekend, very frustrating, but that's part of the territory. When you're building new boats, and it is a brand new boat, I mean a new plug, a new hull, uh, completely new design for those guys. So, you know, that's what you get when you're building new boats. You have teething problems, but I tell you what, you wouldn't want anyone better on the job than Team Maritimo to get that boat sorted out. Back on board now with the local hero, Darren Nicholson and Peter Muddy McGrath in the triple two. And then the infant's friend, Mega Fuels, comes through, Brendan and Chris Fryer. They're still in hot pursuit. Thought they may have had a little bit of an issue earlier on, but I think it was just uh, getting the boat turned in into that tight corner at the bottom end of the course. You can see the boat still... The port engine there just hitting the limit of the starboard engine, not so much. So that's interesting, isn't it, as they come through? That could be anything. That could be a trim angle. Um, obviously, the throttle man in these boats trims the drives as well. So you can trim them individually. You can see the two little sticks sticking up in front of the throttle man there. You can actually see them coming up now. So he's trimming the boat up to accelerate out of the corner. So they trim the engine down, put more boat in the water to come into the corner. They get the boat around the corner with plenty of boat in the water. That gives it grip. Then when they accelerate out, they want maximum trim to come out of the corners. They want to break the propellers free, get the RPM up into the working range for those engines, and you'll get maximum acceleration. Once the boat speed then catches the trim speed that you've got on the boat there, you want to start trimming down again, or else you'll have a uh, what we call a blowover situation where the boat will pick up too much air, too much nose in the air, too much wind down the tunnel, and flip it over backwards. That's not what you want. Saracen have been on the edge of that this whole race. They've been absolutely ragged. Andy Defina and Maddie Kelly have been running that boat, just dancing on its transom the whole way. And the reason for that is they're just trying to get maximum attack out of the bigger boat. It's a 28-foot boat, a bigger 30-foot boat, and it's running against a 25, 26-feet boat. And uh, they just really need to try and extract everything out of that boat. And they've certainly been doing a great job and driving it very hard, particularly given the fact they've had trouble with their steering helm as well. So Matty Kelly in particular is working overtime at the moment trying to keep that boat going around the course with steering that's really not playing the game for him. On board now, Brendan and Chris Fry. They're still trying to play catch-ups. Maritimo, I think these guys are going to really need a problem, but they're not going to get it because the chequered flag comes out. It's produced Maritimo 12 take the win. Tom Barry Cotter and Stevie Jalik, and they are absolutely ecstatic. And I tell you what, that cements a very, very solid position for them within the championship. Brendan and Chris Fryer, great job there for the infant's friend. Mega Fuels entry. Boat number six comes through into second place here at Mighty Lake Macquarie in the Hunter Valley for Destination New South Wales. Brendan and Chris, they're very happy with that. Any day that you can run in that close to the Maritimo team, you're happy. I'll tell you what, speaking of happy, there's going to be a party in the 88 Power Zone camp this evening because Mickey and Griffith they'll take the win in race number three. Let's have a look at the results and in Super Cat Extreme, Maritimo Australia back to Mega Fuels Triple Two. Team three, unfortunately, a DNF and Maritimo 11, unfortunately, a DNS for those guys. And in the Super Cat Outboard category, Team 88 Power Zone take the win back to the Phantom. Couldn't quite get there. And Saracen out of Victoria into third place. Uh, yeah, it was a great weekend to get three from three. 
So um, we're, you know, obviously got the two good starts in the first two races. We uh, had our work cut out for us in that last race, but had a real good battle with uh, with Mega Fuels, and um, you know, managed to come out with the win. Yeah, mate, it was um, boat was feeling good. We didn't do any changes. We took a bit of weight out of it in the second race and ran with what we had, and we we're a bit sus because the other boys were changing things and stuff, but. We thought we had the right setup because we were a bit slow in the uh, second race. So, yeah, no, we got a good start, mate, and we held it around the corner, and it was a really good fight. Um, unfortunately, Maritino just too good, mate, and got underneath us, and yeah, we couldn't get him back. So, it has been. We didn't finish the uh, first race at a gearbox um, field of collapse, so uh, which is okay. Muddy always on the ball. Ball was stuck before we blew it apart, so um, got it fixed and went back out. Oh, great race, but what a fantastic weekend for Team 88 Racing. Having its uh, first first win yesterday in the Supercat outboard, it has taken four and a half seasons to get here, and, um, and another second and a win today. Mate, as you say, how do you get the smile off the face? Yeah, we, had a good, we had a real good weekend. We got a third, first, and a second, so come away with that's pretty good, and um, oh, congratulations to Griff for winning the last race. They, drive an unbelievable race, so congratulations to Yeah, look, it's been a really good weekend for us, a surprising weekend. Uh, we came here thinking we were going to be lapped, uh, but we got a second yesterday, a third first race and third second race today now, and only four seconds off the off the smaller boats, and we weren't that far behind. We drove the absolute proverbial out of it, we really did, so we came out sweating, it was a great day. Uh, I think we're catching the fandom the last couple of rounds, the last couple of laps. And uh, I had an accident trim just for you, Bishop. Uh, no, it's been a great weekend. Well, thank you for trimming up for me, Anthony. First place in the Supercat Extreme Points is Maritimo Australia. Second, Mega Fuels, triple two into third. Fourth, Maritimo and fifth, Team Australia two. And in the Supercat Outboard category, Team 88 Power Zone go to the top of the table with the Phantom into second. Mancini Cosmetics bump down to third. Saracen into fourth and SUV Simrad into fifth spot. And in the Oz 1 overall points championship to the top of the table, Maritimo Australia only by 50 points. Back to the triple two, Mega Fuels, Team 88 Power Zone, Maritimo, Phantom Mancini and Team Australia 2. Well, it's been a fabulous weekend here at Lake Macquarie and I highly recommend everybody gets down here next year. If you didn't get there this year, do yourself a favour. Big thank you to Destination New South Wales and also Marmong Point Marina. Round number five, the final round will be at Harvey Bay. So stick around for that one, folks. My name's Dave Bishop and we'll see you next time.